All right. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, the Australian men's T20 squad uh, for the pa upcoming Pakistan series uh, just announced today. Uh, George Bailey, Chair of Selectors, here to speak with you uh, on that subject. Uh, if you've got any questions for George, uh, as usual, on these Zoom calls, please uh, raise your hand um, via the button within Zoom, and um, we will uh, we will get underway. I think we've got one person here to lead us off, and that would be Sam Chuni. Good day, George. Um, could you just talk through, from a uh, selection perspective, uh, the, the thinking behind none of the test incumbents being named for, for this squad? Yeah, I can. Uh, just the um, they just cross over a little bit in terms of the the preparation. So the test squad will be arriving in Perth and sort of finalising their test prep um, around the time of that second T20. Um, we've been really clear that we um, are prioritising the preparation for individuals um, around the test summer, and um, and that'll be the first time that we sort of get that get that group together. Um, so rather than sort of switching guys in and out and it becoming quite messy, it was just um, deemed uh, more appropriate for a number of reasons to um, to separate them out. Louis. Hey George, sorry, just on the um, on the T Twenty squad, um, it's gonna who's gonna captain the team and have you kind of got a uh, timeline on on when that might be might be known. Yeah, we'll announce it a bit closer to the series. I think there's a number of players um, with the uh, the ability to captain and 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 um, some that have had some captaincy experience as well. So we'll um, yeah we'll work through that and announce that close to the series. And just with the uh, the quicks, obviously Spencer Johnson played I think some domestic cricket on the weekend. Um, how are uh, Ellis and, and Bartlett tracking? Yeah, all, all tracking well. Um, yeah, been gathering as much inf information as we can around that. Spence obviously played the one-day game for South Australia on Friday um, and feedback from that was really good. He's bounced back and, and Xavier and Nathan are progressing uh, really well through their return to play uh, protocols as well. So, yeah, fully expecting that they should uh, all be fit and firing come come the start of this series. Dan Brady. You know, George. Um, in terms of the, I guess, leadership of of this T T Twenty squad. I mean, yeah. Do you look at this? I suppose in the same way as, I guess, squad opportunities for bilateral series that are outside of that sort of World Cup cycle. That it is an opportunity to have a look at people in terms of future opportunities, not just in terms of selection, but in terms of leadership. Uh, no, I think with it, I mean, we're certainly with the Australian captaincy opportunity, we'll give it to the person that we we deem most appropriate. Um, you know, I, th I think the way that Andrew um, and and Pat and Mitch, by extension, have have captained and led the side is that there's always opportunities for a bit more of an extended um, leadership leadership group, I guess, uh, across the white ball white ball um, series and the way the strategy groups work and things like that. So. Um, yeah, we'll, yeah, I, I think we're pretty clear on where we want to go on that. We'll just um, announce it a bit closer to the series. But um, I think as has been the case over a number of number of series, we'll, um, we'll try and extend that group out a bit and keep kind of trying to grow some capacity around leadership for when, uh, when the senior guys aren't there. Sure. And um, just on the uh, Australia A front, Nathan McSweeney's obviously already said um, uh, he doesn't think or, as the captain doesn't think he'll be picking the batting order for for those particular games. Um, can you just talk through sort of where you're at with deciding who, you know, who may who may bat where and and why? Um, I think the the really obvious one there is we've got you know three three uh, players who open the batting for their state, and we've got one player who bats three for their state. So four top order batters uh, to try and to try and fit into three. So there there will be um, some adjustments there. Uh, I think we'll set that set that up for the for the first game, and then if we um, you know if we deem it necessary, or if there's something else we want to have a look at for the second game, we may change that. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dan. I can't see any more hands up here, guys. Are there any more questions for George? Uh, Tom. G'day, George. I'm just checking what selectors' sort of movements are this week ahead of these Shield games and Oz A games, and how significant is this? First, I was a game of the two in terms of what you're going to pick for that test squad and what are you looking to get out of it? 
Uh, we're looking looking for performance. I think anytime there's these Australia A opportunities, um, I think I mentioned last week. There's whether it's um, whether it's real or not, but uh, you know, the, there's there's always the perception that there's a little bit more pressure. Um, obviously, the standard of cricket uh, is is pretty high, so that's always a great opportunity. Seeing how players interact um, in a in a different team to what they're used to around their states, all that's really important. Um, so, yeah, we'll certainly will have select a presence at, at both the A games um, and, and we'll be watching closely. Have you had any chats to Cam Bancroft? Obviously, a lot of people had him in their Test 11 over the last few weeks and it hasn't been a great little period for him. Have you let him be or had any chats to him? Where's sort of he in the pecking order now? Like, is has he sort of hurt his chances there over the last couple of weeks? No, I mean I reached out to him um, after the after the first Shield game. Again, you know he's been consistent for a really long period of time. Um, you know that's that's got to count for something, I think. So it's not. Um, I think missing out in a couple of Shield games isn't isn't going to be the the be all and end all on that front um, when he has been as consistent as he has. Um, so no, I think there's there's certainly enough intrigue and, and speculation around those spots um, that. Um, you know, we don't need to to sort of inundate the players at this stage of of their season. I think every player is going out, um, trying their best and trying to perform, and that that doesn't you know doesn't change whether they have been scoring runs or not. So, I imagine Cam's in exactly the same space as he always is. You know, I've seen some feedback from some of the other WA players that um, you know he's still working as hard as he is, and sometimes these things happen where you go through a little period where things don't go your way. Louis. Yeah, just um, you know, up on the on the bowlers side of things, George, and and all the injuries you guys had on that uh, white ball tour, or and, and even leading into that white ball tour of um of the UK. Just wondering on your reflections in terms of um whether you do something differently with with how that's kind of managed. Um, yeah, specifically with the quicks. No, it's always an interesting balance, um, particularly depending what stage of a, a year that those series happen and we you know whether they're overseas or um you know out of season per se for for australian players um how much sort of franchise cricket they've been playing that that can have an influence as well um i guess it's those periods where you potentially you're not getting um as much day-to-day information as you would be um when those players are playing domestic cricket and you and you've got that access to the information as, as quickly and readily as you need um I think one of the other challenges for a lot of those quicks outside of the the more senior ones who have played a lot over the last last few years is that that it can be a challenge where you um, you jump into those bilateral series and you, you tend to have a a big clumping of games in a really short space of time. So um, you know I think all fast bowlers go through that sort of learning learning stage of of what they their body can and can't do and the intensity and pressure of international cricket so they'll keep developing that um you know it's it's hard work being a fast bowler i don't think we'll ever get to a stage where we eradicate injuries completely um and i think if you specifically go through those you know the uk tour that you mentioned there was some there was some pretty random ones in there as well so um you know always something that we're we're looking at but um not necessarily something that we need to to change and not something that um, has any carryover to the test stuff. Like you feel like you've got a better handle on the guys who, um, you know, underneath the big three, um, you know, in terms of keep managing them, you feel like you've got a better handle on on them throughout the, the India series? I just think that, you know, for the ones, the, the three, the three that have come back in, in Nathan, Spencer and Xavier, they've obviously had some time to um, to get back um, to their physical best, which is which is good. So they, they should be fresh and ready to go. Um, I think Sean Abbott's um, showing he's incredibly robust. He had a, a really heavy workload through the UK and we're able to freshen him up a little bit and give him a bit of a break before he um, jumped back in for New South Wales. So... Um, yeah, I think that's just part part of the journey for for those quicks of of learning, um, you know how how hard it is uh, physically at the international level and and what it takes to be ready to play. Dan, uh, thanks again. Um, did you uh, have a chat for David Warner after his comments, George? What did you What did you make of those? Uh, is, you'll have to be specific. Which oh, which sorry, comments? sorry, he has that, he has said a few things over the journey. Uh, no, specifically about him putting his hand up to uh, to play again if, if required. Yeah, I was firmly. I have spoken to him um, about that. Um, 
I was firmly in the in the camp of uh, assuming he was uh, making those comments in jest. I think there was clearly some that took them very seriously, and um, some that I think took them as as David intended, with uh, with tongue firmly in cheek. And just to follow up, um, Josh Inglis, there's been some commentary on it. Greg Shippard has, has flagged him as a potential test opener. Is that something that's at all on your mind, or, or do you see him? if he is in test calculations as a down the order proposition or obviously the backup keeper. Yeah, I've spoken to Josh on this, not, not in the short term. I don't think um, that he's someone that we'd be looking to, to place at the top of the order, but there's no doubt that the, the form is, is really um, fantastic at the moment, as we've seen, you know, when he has been playing for Australia and then the ability to, to j jump back into domestic cricket and, and dominate as he has been, it's been fantastic. So, um, you know, I think different series at different times of the year, um, he would firmly come into the mix um, purely as a batter, um, the way he's been going. Um, and I think, you know, if, if, if the right opportunity opened up throughout the summer, um, you know, we've got some in the spots where we think he's most capable of performing, then I think he'd be firmly in that conversation as well. Thanks. All right. Uh, thanks, Cole. Uh, hey, George. Uh, just just in the press release, it does say that any members of the T Twenty squad selected could make it to the first test. Uh, I mean, you spoke about Josh Inglis. There uh, is there anyone in this squad who could make that test squad or is in the reckoning? Um. Oh, there's probably a few. I mean, I guess it depends a little bit. You just got to cover your bases in case you lose lose the wrong person at the wrong time. So just making sure that yeah, we just clearly there was some the. Um, a handful of test incumbents that that would be um, usually in this team that won't be there. So just being clear that if if that does shift, that we can we can get someone across to Perth, uh, and their preparation would look a little bit different. But um, but that'll be okay. Uh, and you just quickly, I mean, it's 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 not your job to select the Indian squad, but it is out uh, the test squad. So uh, have you made much of it, or what have you made of it? I uh, haven't given it m many looks. Obviously, it's you know any any time India put a squad out, it's incredibly strong. Um, I think you know, and they've shown over the last couple of times I've toured here that the depth is is pretty incredible. So um, you know, I think as we get closer to that, we'll obviously start to focus in a little bit more uh, on that from a strategy front. But in in terms of test selection in Australia, um, you know, we tend to focus more on on what we we think we need uh, as opposed to the opposition. Perfect. Thanks, John. Uh, Mark, Mark, 3DC. I'm not sure who you are. Mark? Sorry, Cole, I couldn't hear you, but I think that's me. Uh, George, um, obviously there's been sort of three or four names that have been talked about in terms of the batting at the top of the batting order that have been talked about in the media, but how how much wider are you throwing your net? How many other players might you be looking at apart from those four that have been getting a lot of coverage? And are you, for instance, also looking at all-rounders? Uh, again, I think... I think depending what we need at, at the time, um, you know, I think we've we've been on record as saying that um, we've obviously lost Cam as an uh, as an all rounder, um, but you don't necessarily have to to dress it up the same way each and every time you select a side. So, um, I mean, uh, yeah, we're all I think we're always looking uh, more broadly than that um, to make sure that we've got options if we if we do need a player in a certain position. Um, but I think, the, you know, the four players that have been mentioned quite a bit, Josh Inglis, um, are certainly the guys um, from a batting point of view have been have been really standing out at the start of the season. Can I just briefly ask, you, do you have any concerns about the, the form of the players whose names are always going to be there in the test side, the established test players? Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, those, those guys that have, have played a, a lot of test cricket um, and have have prepared and and a series on the back of lots of runs on the back of playing different formats at different times. Uh, I think we've got enough evidence to suggest that that doesn't necessarily flow on to, to what you're going to see um, come a test match. So um, no, I trust with all those guys. And as we've said uh, right throughout the summer, there's, there's a, a real, been a real focus at the individual level on how they prepare and, and make sure they're ready um, for the first ball or, the, you know, whenever they're first involved in that first test. And and that that's really what's, what's crucial. Um, you know, there's, as I said, around Cam Bancroft, I think everyone's out there trying to do their best and, and spend as much time in the middle or, or get the right amount of overs under their belt. Um, but I think they're all experienced enough that regardless of whether they, 
they go in with a mountain of runs behind them or, or not quite as many as they would like or, you know, wickets or whatever that may look like, um, that they'll be ready to go come the first test. Uh, last one here. Back to Dan Bredig to finish off. Oh, Dan, you there? He's disappeared. He has dropped out. Um, all right. Well, we might wrap, might wrap it up there then. Oh, yeah. hang on. Sorry, oh. sorry, uh, sorry, guys. My uh, my mute button was working too well. Um, so just yeah, uh, one question for the now, one for the for the future. So David just asked about the the um, uh, I suppose concerns about incumbent batters. Um, not so much concerns about how they were going, but um, were you sort of keen to ensure that they were focused on playing as well as they were rather than where they were going to bat? Because that obviously was the big the big conversation topic the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, you know, once once everyone uh, understands the role that they're going to play, then the focus is is absolutely and rightly should should shift to uh to performance and being ready to perform. So um yeah, look looking forward to um yeah, as as everyone is looking forward to the test match actually starting and and seeing those guys put their best foot forward from a performance perspective. And um, yeah, just the longer term one. So obviously, Pakistan and India, uh, sorry, Pakistan and New Zealand, the series that uh, have just been um, decided um, in uh, South Asia, left arm finger spin, very big component of both of those sort of winning series. Um, Matt Kuhneman did pretty well in India last uh, year when you were there. But I suppose, can you just talk through, I guess, how you see that particular skill set and I suppose what you can do to encourage it in terms of um, its use in Australian cricket, knowing how important it can be in that part of the world? Yeah, great question. And yeah, happy to very much publicly throw it out there that it's, a, it's an incredible skill set in the, in the subcontinent. Um, we've seen that for for a, a, a many years um, and um you know, realistically, there's not not a huge amount of players uh, in domestic cricket at the moment that are that are doing it. So, um, yeah, it's something that we're looking to continue to expose. It's certainly one of the reasons why um, you know we're excited about Cooper Connolly and his journey. Um, you know, still still very much a work in progress with his left arm spin. But um, you know, Matt Kuhneman, um, Ash Agar, there's there's just not a great deal of many players who who can do it um, but it's a skill set that we know we're going to have plenty of subcontinent tours um, plenty of plenty of tours and tests where uh, that skill set would be highly desirable so um, yeah encourage anyone who's who's got that up their sleeve to work hard at it thank you thanks Dan and thanks uh, George thanks for joining us today everybody um, and we'll catch up with you all next time thanks Cole thanks George cheers George yes. appreciate